Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. As promised, we're back here again with the rest of the Battle for Zendikar lore that we still have to catch up on. If you missed part one of this synopsis, boom, here's a link right there. Go click it. Anywho, let's pick up with Memories of Blood. The story picks up with Drana, Blood Chief of Colostria, leading a massive convoy of refugees. When the Eldrazi emerged, many of the vampires in Malakir fell under their thrall. Drana led the charge to liberate Malakir from the traitorous vampires. From there, she led her band of vampires in no particular direction so long as it was in the opposite direction of the Eldrazi. Along the way, her group picked up more and more members, both vampires and not. Today, her convoy is approached by a delegation of about a hundred core scouts. The scouts were a delegation from Gideon's army trying to recruit as many survivors as possible to take back Seagate. Drana was unimpressed but saw that the core and their kite sails may prove useful, so she led them through her camp. Drana has put even the children among her refugees to work as soldiers to fight the Eldrazi. It may seem cruel, but Drana reasons that the threat of the Eldrazi means their chances of survival aren't much diminished by joining the fight directly. Soon enough, the convoy comes under attack by Eldrazi. The convoy gets pinned between three groups of monsters. Drana's forces engage the largest of the groups, and Drana herself enters the fray. However, the Eldrazi are too numerous. Drana must pursue other avenues if she is to win. She commands her child soldiers to engage the sire of the Eldrazi host. This, in turn, causes the core kite sails to follow. The kite sails are killed in fairly short order by the Eldrazi, but the sire is lured into position and the children have yet to fall. With the sire in place, Drana dives directly into its heart and casts a spell. This spell essentially allows her to drain the man of the Eldrazi. Through it, she learns what the Eldrazi knows, and remembers how the vampires of Zendikar were created by the Eldrazi to be their thralls. She becomes distinctly aware of a there that the Eldrazi came from, the Blind Eternities. Drana is nearly subsumed into the will of the Eldrazi sire. However, she pulls back her consciousness and her will at the last moment. Now, she has the raw power of the Eldrazi on her side, if only momentarily. She uses it to power what's left of her army to victory. With the Eldrazi menace defeated, Drana turns her convoy's course towards Seagate. Now that she's aware of the concept of planes, Drana puts together that Gideon is from another plane and wants to have words with him. With Nyssa's quest, we return to Nyssa. She's departed from the survivor's camp at Skyrock in search of a Shia or anything that can reconnect her to the soul of the world. In the process, she encounters a goblin fleeing desperately from a stampede of Eldrazi. Nyssa fights the Eldrazi pack and is nearly outnumbered, but help suddenly arrives from a passing core looking for the goblin that just fled past. The core identifies Nyssa as a ranger and introduces himself as Munda, an old ally of Gideon's. Munda explains that the goblin Peely was looking for a friend of hers named Leek, who she thinks might still be alive at Seagate. However, Nyssa is fairly impassive toward Munda's explanation, instead focusing on Track and Peely. Eventually they catch up, and Nyssa tries to talk to Peely. It seems Peely has found what she was looking for. There are goblins caved in underground, crying for help. Nyssa clears the cave-in, but while there are survivors, Leek is not among them. His body, along with two other casualties, are with the survivors. Peely is distraught to find this, and Nyssa tries to console her. Then Nyssa comes to a realization. Zendikar's soul may have retreated to a last bastion in Kalni Heart. Inspired and thoroughly heartened by the realization, Nyssa sets toward Kalni Heart to reconnect to the world. The last story we're catching up on today is Home Waters. Kiora is back on Zendikar and she has Thassa's Bident with her. In fact, she's just arrived from Theros and is rather concerned about the condition of her home plane, given the loom and threat of the Eldrazi. Her initial landing was on the shore of Tazim and all looked well, but soon enough she found evidence of the corrupted dust left behind by Ulamog's brood. From the shore, Kiora could sense not only the Eldrazi, but merfolk survivors as well. We get some insight into Kiora's feelings on the matter with a flashback to her childhood. In those days, the merfolk had their gods, Ula, Em, and Kosi. This was before they realized that their so-called gods were half-memories of the monstrous Eldrazi titans. And in those days, the god that had most readily commanded Kiora's loyalty was the trickster god, Kosi. The next day, Kiora finds the merfolk survivors. As is becoming a running theme, they're beset by Eldrazi and swimming for their lives. Kiora eagerly puts her new Biden to use, setting the Eldrazi off balance and powering up her own sea creatures. 
The merfolk gather on the beach, and Kiora saw among them her sister Turi. Their reunion brings to Kiora's mind the memory of when her spark ignited. In the maw of a sea serpent, on the verge of being devoured, she was carried away from Zendikar just in time. Her first task then was to find her way back to Zendikar. Through conversation, it becomes clear that Turi was at Seagate when it fell and only barely escaped with her life. Turi's main concern is finding their tribe, but Kiora wants to focus on defeating the Aldrazi themselves because she knows that otherwise nowhere on Zendikar will be safe. An elder merfolk overhears and tries to explain their plight to Kiora, but she isn't having any of it. Kiora insists on returning to Seagate to stand and fight against the Eldrazi, winning over many of the merfolk survivors in the process. Kiora summons a sea serpent, and she and the survivors following her ride away towards Seagate, and Kiora promises she'll see Turi again. And that's the story so far. When more Uncharted Realm stories are out, we'll be there to catch you up on what happens. Let me know what you think of the story so far. Do you like where we're headed, hated? How outrageously awesome is Drana? You know, talk about stuff, jeez. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manasaurus. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.